I like video games. I mean, there are so many good games out there. Forza, Mario, Minecraft, Roblox, Portal, Pokemon, Geometry Dash, Among Us, and so much more. Like animation, video games can be used to tell a story or to share an experience. A few years ago, back when I was a wee little boy, I had the idea of making a game because I really enjoyed playing games. So I was like, how hard could it be? So I went to one of the most basic programming websites you can go to, called Scratch, tried it, gave up in the first week. The process was not what I was expecting. I thought it would be like one, two, bing, bang, boom, and we're done. But no. Game development takes a long time, and even some of the most simplest games could take months to make. I didn't really want to commit to all that work. But fast forward a few years, and we're here, right now, me making this video about the game that I just made, or that I'm in the process of making. So without further ado, I present to you, Protocube Instability Detected. <clears throat> Instructions. Use arrow keys. Okay, I'll stop. Use arrow keys to move around and use WASD to control the hand. Seems simple enough. Well, here's the title card. I made it myself. You can see how the buttons move when I interact with them. And if I go ahead and click on the credits button, we'll be taken to a page. Well, it's blank for now, but we have this character over here. Now, this character and the character on the title card are both the main character. As you could have guessed, their name is Protocube. Originally, I was planning on having this be the main character, but when I went to do the sprite stuff and all the animations and all the programming and stuff, it was a little bit too difficult, so I just decided on a simple square because that was the easiest thing I could think of. But we'll just say that this is our main character design for now. I'll implement it better later on, but for now we're just gonna stick with the square. Now if we move over to the other two buttons, we have play and speed run. I'll get to speed run later, so let's just click play. As we get loaded into the game, we can see the game mechanics actually coming together. We got moving left and right, jumping, uh, gravity falling down. We got the animations for the sprite whenever it's walking. But if you look above, we have a collectible. I call it a power core or a power star. And these are scattered all around the map. On this side of the map, we have our first enemy called the Corrupted Cores. In the lore of the game, these cores were originally used to help test the Protocube's abilities. But when the facility was abandoned 12 years ago, the cores started wandering around, developing new code and becoming unstable. Now another thing you're going to notice while traveling the facility are these red and black objects. These are corrupted constructs and they are very dangerous to the Protocube. Now this guy, I wanna keep it a secret. I want the game to explain who this guy really is in the whole lore and stuff. Cause this guy has a lot of lore, but I'm gonna save that for the game. And so now we're coming to the point of the game where we have a key item, which it quite literally is a key. It is used to open every single door in the facility. Once we make it down and avoid the corrupted constructs, we come to this level. There is a little smasher that like smashes stuff and you will lose a life if you go under that at the wrong time, like you just saw there. Over here, we have our first checkpoint. That's that little star thingy. And once you go over this wall, you get to this section. This is where the first door appears and this is where we utilize the key that we found earlier. But don't stay under it too long because it will crush you. And after a few levels, we get to this section. Now this is the more advanced section of the facility and this is mainly used to test the protocube's parkour ability. Once you pass those levels, we come to this section, the red section. This is red because there's a lot more dangerous objects. Now these corrupted cores have the ability or the off chance of being invincible. I don't know if that's a bug or not, but for some reason that happens sometimes. And this is the first section where we have a boss. Now you can't normally do a boss in Scratch, but I figured out a way for me to do it. But before we go to the boss, let me show you the second game mode, speed run mode. Now in this game mode, all the dangerous objects are deleted and it's just a race against time. 
Now, if you want to collect all the power cores, then that's up to you. But the main focus is to get from the start of the game to the boss fight as fast as possible. And I'll show you my speed run right now. And as my run comes to the close, we can finally see what the boss fight actually looks like for the first time, without it being a slideshow. Now, as you could probably tell, this is a work in progress. A lot of things need to be changed, a lot of things need to be fixed, but for now, this is all I got. And considering the fact that my last attempt wasn't really an attempt, and I have basically zero knowledge on how to make a game, this is arguably a very impressive game for a person who doesn't know what they're doing. So right now, I'm gonna do a scroll through of all of the code for the game. Now, 90% of the code is game physics, and there's a really, really great tutorial on how to make a platformer by Griff Patch, the GOAT himself. Most of the time was me learning the game physics, and like I said, going through the tutorial of how to make a platformer. But things like the credits, the speedrun mode, the um, some of the collectibles, and the boss fight especially was all custom coded by me. Well, this is the end of the video, and if you made it this far, you might as well subscribe because you watched the entire video, so that means you must have enjoyed it. And if you don't want to miss another upload, hit that notification bell. Do people even say that anymore? I don't even know. I want to hit 10k subscribers by the end of the year, and we're almost halfway there, so if you can subscribe, that would be awesome. If not, that's totally fine. That's all I got. I'll see you in the next video, God bless, and I hope you have a safe and fantastic rest of your day.